All right, you guys, this is Ross, the fig boss. Today we're looking at the, uh, the in-ground figs. We're doing a fig review on a variety that's way back in here. It's called Negra de Agde. Um, I believe it's a Spanish variety. I think that's a Spanish name, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I wish I could show you guys this individual tree because it is really actually very impressive among a lot of these in-ground trees in here, uh, it's set a lot of fruit and it grows very quickly. I think because, um, you know, it's, it grows really quickly, it's quite a vigorous variety that uh, the fruits were able to set on the, uh, the branches because it just kind of got, reached that light a little bit easier or quicker than some of the other varieties in this giant mess of trees. It took a while for the tree to put out or get those fruits on the branches. You can kind of see them down in there. Uh, there's probably a good foot, maybe a foot and a half along the four main fruiting branches that I, I pruned it to. So from the base, there are four main fruiting branches. And along those four main fruiting branches, the bottom foot to foot and a half doesn't have any fruit on it. And you could see that it really depends on the variety, but some of these varieties, even when they, they you know, uh, wake up from dormancy, they don't necessarily need nearly as much light as other varieties do, uh, like this Naruchiello de Elba. And it had fruit all up and down the branches, all the way from the bottom, from really where the first leaf was to the, the, the highest leaf here on the tree, you'll see fruit buds. So it took this variety a little bit a little bit longer, a foot and a half, like I said, of growth to actually set the fruit buds. But once it did, uh, the tree is loaded. It's covered in fruits uh, pretty much top to bottom from that point upwards. And even higher up after I pinched it, after I uh, did some um, different pruning and whatnot, and you could see that it's just getting the light that it needs and therefore was able to set the fruit buds. So, I would say it is a very vigorous variety and I would also say that it actually will set the fruits relatively easy, uh, especially if you get, you know, you're in a higher light environment. This whole area back here, I mean, this is like barely getting any sun at this, this point of the year. It's kind of crazy actually uh, how much of a detriment this, you know, area was, used to be the sunniest spot of my yard is actually been downgraded quite a bit because these big shade trees back here where normally during the day, uh, this would be getting sunlight all day and it's just not. So in the beginning of the season, it was as the season progresses, the sun gets a little lower in the, in the sky. <coughs> you know, after that, after that solstice. And then also the shade trees are getting bigger every year. So this section of the yard really is going to struggle, I think, in the future. Um, especially with setting those figs, guys. Uh, it just gets worse and worse every year. Um, and what was, I thought, a pretty good area to plant figs is now actually, I think, a pretty bad area to plant the figs, personally. But I'm making do with what I got. So here's actually the fruits. Uh, this is the first off of the in-ground tree. So I have this one in a pot. I've had a few of these in a pot, actually. I sold a couple last year, I think. I bare-rooted some and sold them to people. This is a variety, as I said, it's called Negra de Agde and has a really good reputation among quite a few of the, uh, the hobbyist fig growers that I respect. My friend Jamie really likes this and my friend Danny really likes this fig. So let me show you the inside. Just cut it open. And it's a beaut. There's a little bit of spoilage in there in the center. I think that's just what's happening right now this time of the year, we have so many fruit flies. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or what, but uh, I've been seeing some of that spoilage in there in the center. And you know, it's tough to get these fruits guys perfect at this point. We're in also in October, the fruit flies are crazy, um, much crazier than prior years, but I think this one is just ripe enough to not be spoiled. So we'll see. Yeah, it smells good. And maybe that could just be a visual thing. I don't see any SWD and typically I would see it right now. 
So I'm struggling to pick them too early. Sometimes you pick them too early uh, and then they're not as good, but they don't have the fruit flies in them or they're not fermented yet. And then sometimes I want to let them ripen another day and then I come out here the next day and they're spoiled, they're fermented. So it's a tricky process and this one seems to be pretty good. As I have been saying though, I've been getting this particular variety in a pot for a couple weeks. So not only do I have this in the ground, but I have it in a pot. The potted tree has been very unimpressive. I think this one really uh, needs some time to mature. And I think it really needs uh, probably to be in the ground to some extent. I've noticed, at least with the potted tree here, guys, it's, you know, it's kind of really shady at this point, but at least with the potted tree, I've noticed that it's been, um, you know, the, the uh, detachment of the figs has been very easy. So they've been very easy to detach. And typically that could be very variety specific. So this variety could just detach easy from the tree. You know, that's a big reason why certain varieties don't dry well is because they'll just fall from the tree before they ever get to dry. Um, you know, so the other reason it could just simply be to the fact that this tree is just not that mature and you know, it's a potted tree and that's, that's just the reason for it. So this potted tree isn't very old. I think it's maybe only two years old now from cutting or something like that. You could see actually a fruit right here. <coughs> Excuse me guys. I got something caught in my throat. <coughs> but uh, like I said, the, <coughs> oh man, the in-ground tree is super, super impressive. Uh, and what it's been able to do this year is just, I think a bit striking because I wasn't really expecting that from this variety. You know, and some people were, like I said, my friend Jamie, my friend Danny. Danny's the operator and owner of FigBid. <coughs> oh, man. And, uh, you know, this is one of his favorites. I think I've actually tried this fig, not just last year. It was my first year trying it. This one probably, though, is my first real uh, taste off of my own tree. But about four years ago, yeah, about four years ago, I tried this same very fig uh, that my friend Jamie brought to the Staten Island Fig Festival September 15th-ish, four years ago. And I was able to eat this and I was actually rather impressed. What I've noticed though on my own tree, my own fruits, and what I've heard is that it really has a cherry flavor to it. So it's very interesting. I, I personally think this is a beautiful fig inside and out. It reminds me of kind of like uh, exterior wise of like a uh, Borges Soak Grease. The fig seems very soft. Um, the skin doesn't seem too thick or, you know, like a problem. The eye seemingly is a little bit open on this one. Uh, it hangs pretty well considering the shape. You know, it's a rounder fig. I would say maybe even um, something between your Ciolato and... Um, Oh man, what's the other shape that I'm thinking of? Kind of like an Atriano or a, a white Triana, typically that has a longer neck and then a really round um, flat bottom like you'll see like on a black Madeira. So it's kind of like a black Madeira with a longer neck, if that makes any sense. Very soft, you could tell it's very jammy um, and it almost looks a little bit congealed too. So interesting, let's try it now. See if this cherry flavor holds up. Yeah, you know what? It's actually very good, guys. Really high sugar content. Really sweet fruit for, um, you know, for how cold it is. Like today it's cold, like I need this thing. I'm wearing this though for the, for the mosquitoes mostly, but it is cold and it hasn't been really warm here at night. It's October, like I said, it's like October 1st. So this is a really impressive fruit. I'm really impressed with this. I'm not picking up the cherry flavor like I did in the other one or that acidity that I did in the other one. And what I heard that it's supposed to have, but this is a very good flavored fig. And you know what? It performs pretty well. Like considering, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like a, a late season fruit. I wouldn't say it's early, it's somewhere around mid mid to sort of on the later side, but 
Um, you know, in that category of all the fruits that taste really good, that one's a pretty good performer. So overall, it's got a lot of good characteristics that I like. Um, and I'm surprised, truly, because I typically don't like the shape that you'll see on this particular variety, these, these flatter figs. And I'm not sure if this is, this, this definitely isn't the best choice for somebody in a humid climate. But to have the experience that I just had off of that tree, I think that is well worth it. And um, I'm going to highly recommend it for people in, in drier places. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you guys are in um, <clears throat> California or a really warm part of California, just somewhere dry. If you haven't long enough of a season, you probably might struggle with this one in um, the Pacific Northwest, but I'd have to find out if it ripens Braba. You can read about this variety actually in really good detail on this uh, Galgoni website. If you type in Galgoni and figs, it'll come up. I forget the exact name of the website, but that's a, a Spanish hobbyist that collects figs and he has good details on it. So. I'm actually really, I've been really impressed with that. I think that's probably like uh, at least a 4.5 out of 5 in terms of flavor. I like it a lot. So, yeah, you're probably going to hear more about this fig in the future. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. We'll catch you for the next one.